geometers and general seekers of truth. In this video, we will solve this problem by finding, I forgot to state the problem here, but we want to find the measure of angle one here. Okay? And we're given some information about the arcs. And um, just as in some of the previous videos in this series, what we're going to do is try to you know, use what we've learned in the past. Um, we're going to make very extensive use of the inscribed angle theorem. So just once more, one more, we're gonna, we are going to use the inscribed angle theorem quite a bit. So this is a very important uh, theorem. Um, if you don't know what this says, please go back and watch, look at the, look at the video, look at the uh, links and go and find this, this proof so that you understand what this says. Okay. All right. So without further ado, let's begin. So as always, I'm going to name these points here just so that we have um, a precise way of explaining everything. And at this point here in the middle, I'm going to call it D, all right? And, um, you know, we don't quite know what to do. We know that if we could somehow use inscribed angles, that would help. And so we're just going to start, I'm just going to start drawing inscribed angles. Now, um, if you do this and for a different problem, you don't get quite what you want, just restart. And don't worry about making a mistake the first time. That's very normal. Um, so I'm going to try to draw inscribed angles in such a way that uh, we can use these arcs here. So I'm going to go and make a line from E to C right here. And by doing so, by doing that, um, we can see a few things. That we have an arc here that's 120 degrees. And then we have an angle here. Angle C intercepts that arc. So that's going to help us quite a bit. So we know that the measure of angle C is going to be equal to 1 half the measure of arc EA the measure of arc EA and uh, that's equal to one half of 120 so that's 60 degrees so this angle in here is 60 degrees and then um, we can do we can make use of something else that uh, that happened when we constructed this line and I'm going to use a slightly different highlighting color here. So if we look at this angle here, angle E, we can see that it intercepts this arc. Right? And using the inscribed angle theorem, um, we know that the measure of angle E, let's use a different color here, the measure of angle E is in fact equal to one half the measure of arc CB. So that's one half times 98 and we get 49 degrees. So this angle up here is 49 degrees. And now again at this point we actually have enough in order to answer our question. Um, but the picture is a little bit cloudy, it's a little bit messy. So I'm going to try to extract this um, this this triangle here from the picture. So let's see. I have EC right here. I have this line out here. And then I have, uh, let's see, that line's a little bit too long. I have this line out here, something like that. And then I have this line going this way. Okay. And... Uh, just so that you can see what we're, what I'm, I'm working with here. Um, this point up here is E, this point right here is C, this point right here is D, and this is angle one. This is 49 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. So as before, uh, from the external angles theorem, we can say that angle E plus angle C must be equal to angle one. Angle E plus the measure of angle C must be equal to the measure of angle 1. Um, and our problem is basically done because we know that the measure of angle C is 60 degrees. Oh, excuse me. The measure of angle E is 49 degrees. 
and then the measure of angle C is 60 degrees. And those two added up must equal to the measure of angle 1. So this is 109 degrees. And that's equal to the measure of angle 1. Okay, so there we have it, our final answer. So um, again, from this problem, hopefully you see the, you know, at first it seems like we don't have enough information and it's just all wild and crazy and hopeless. But if we start trying um, using the inscribed angle theorem, we can actually extract a lot of problems a lot of information and be able to solve the problem. We make use of triangles and some old theorems here that involves a triangle and uh, we arrive to our solution quite smoothly. Now again, we don't want to just solve this one problem, we want to be able to solve all similar problems. So I'm going to um, start another video where we work on a much, much more general case of this. As always, ask for help if you need it, keep working hard, keep fighting the good struggle. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.